shot of me changing is actually a really basic effect because all I have to do is I have to walk to a position and I'm looking at a point on the wall and I basically just do the same move over and over again. Then I stop, change clothes, do the same move again, stop, change clothes. And then in After Effects, I'm masking out the uh, sleeves and then bringing them in so it's not just a wipe, they kind of come in from the sleeves out. And then after the third time, I do the motion and I walk out frame. There's many different ways you can do this effect. Uh, one would be to do 3D objects and do reflections and all that stuff. Uh, the way we're trying to do it right now is just by having Freddy walk past and then doing shots where we pull each of the guns separately and then just rub them out and composite them together. <laughs> Black thread failed, so moving on to the old metal coat hanger, which I always plan B. Now, the key to making this composite look good is going to be saving the shadows and the reflections off the table. You could just rotor the gun and try to do it that way, but it won't, it won't quite sit into the environment right. It'll look fake. And so basically by preserving that, it's gonna look just right. All right, so we got a lot of questions about how we did the car flip shot. Most of the conversation was actually focused around why we used the Prius, and I'll tell you why. There's two very good reasons, very different reasons why we did it. Number one, we already had a textured Prius from Jedi A Holes. And since we were finishing this whole video in 36 hours, I needed to save some time. And the second reason is because it gives us the opportunity, if we use a Prius, we can mix in all sorts of like throaty engine noises, like vroom, 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 when we start it up and have it just go like absolutely just peel out, which a lot of you guys enjoy in the comments. So for the actual sequence, the key to doing CG elements that are integrated is to kind of design your sequence to really sell the effects because you're introducing something that's entirely fake into the world. What we did here, we have three shots at one flip. So we start the sequence with a handheld shot of Freddy walking up to the car. Freddy's shoulders rotoed and the camera's moving so you can really see that the car blends into the shot and it really sells the effect. Once Freddy goes to hit the car, we cut to a side angle so we don't have to deal too much with the impact of the gun hitting it. And then we cut to a third angle of the car landing. <laughs> Because if you try to do it one shot, the car flips over and bounces and you can see more of the, the motion of it's not quite right. But by doing it two different angles, it cuts together better. Now I've been getting a lot of tweets and a lot of comments about people who want to start doing 3D stuff. And so I thought I'd give you guys a few tips. Now if you want to learn a 3D application, I recommend 3ds Max because it's, it's the only one I've ever done. So I, can really, I can't really recommend anything else. However, I do recommend this. If you are going to try it out, first download Blender, which is a free 3D application which you can download and basically try out. I don't recommend continuing to use that forever. However, it's a good one to like, take the first steps, see if you actually like doing it before you spend all the money and getting the actual software. So I'm going up to the roof right now. We're going to film down in the street in order to get the Frogger angle. So we're going to be up above. Freddy's going to work his way over to that BMW he just spotted. Despite all appearances, the Frogger stunt actually wasn't much of a stunt at all. We uh, waited until there was a nice break in traffic, and I just ran across and pretended to dodge cars. Then we rotated me out and added the cars in later. How do we add in cars? Well, you set the camera up on a tripod and you let the cars wipe frame. And then when you do that, you have that individual car as an element that you can then put back into the shot. So we could build the traffic so it looks like I'm inches away from getting hit by a car. But then when the truck goes by, I just lay down for a little bit. We waited for a truck to go by in that lane and that's the truck we used. This actually calls back to one of the old school viral videos of a guy running across the street and ducking under a bus. Pretty much the same technique, but on a larger scale. So the shot of me seeing the car and jumping off the roof, the first shot of me actually seeing it is just taken on the street. We have the leaf blower blowing me in the face so it looks like the wind is going. And since there's nothing in the background, you can't tell I'm just standing there. Uh, I see it, I jump off. The roll is actually just the camera on a tripod. It's two shots, one with the car just wiping frame, and then one with me running off of a table that we set up on the street and doing the dive roll. We had to speed up the dive roll a little bit to try and make it look like it had some more forward momentum. The outline Tron effect of the car, I pulled the still image of the car into Photoshop, used the find edges filter, and then paint brushed it and cleaned it up, and this is what it looks like. Uh, inverted it so it was white on the black background. Pulled it into After Effects and then used the mask to reveal portions of it sweeping across and set it to screen mode and then blurred it a little bit so it looked like a glowing outline of the car. And for the stats, those are just layers in Photoshop that are animated in and then tracked onto the car so it looks like they're stuck there. Ah! Diving through the door is a very basic effect. There's only two shots that you need to get. Uh, we set the camera up on a tripod, held the door open for the first shot and I dove straight through it. And then for the second shot, Brandon stood behind the door, we had the door closed and he pushed the door open. Uh, and then the final shot is basically my dive combined with the door opening. Oh, okay. I pushed it open. I, I give it a massive shoulder. Light. It was like, it was like a, a ah, boom! That's what it was.
But that's why I didn't need any speed ramping, because it just exploded open when I hit it. If it doesn't explode open with the intensity of a thousand suns, you'll have to do a little speed ramping in that. Which we didn't in this case, but for yours, you probably will, because you don't have someone with a, a massive shoulder. 